COVID caused production delays with my splitting edge design order, but my splitter is finally here. It should look similar to this when installed. They also offer splitters for the 2011 to 2013 TCs, as well as first gens. And if you want matching winglets, they offer those too. It's made from HDPE, which is high density polyethylene plastic. It's a quarter of an inch thick and it's fairly stiff. It has pre-drilled mounting holes that should line up with the screw holes on the bumper. It's going to replace my universal polyurethane splitter, which I had to get creative with when mounting. It's not as thick as it appears, as you can see my finger going behind the edge here. It has a bit of flex to it, especially when compared to the new one, which does flex, but not as much. I also wish the old splitter was wider, so I'm glad I have this new one. Now that I have better clearance, let's get the bumper off. I'll put a link to my bumper removal guide in the video description below. This is the flexible hose to my air filter for my 3D printed bumper duct in case you were wondering. The new splitter is definitely wider than what I currently have. It extends forward the same amount, which is 4 inches. You can tell this isn't a universal splitter just by looking at the back, and all these holes appear to line up. Now to pop off and remove all the white plastic screw retainers. The splitter included a plastic bag of hardware. This carriage bolt goes up through the bottom of the splitter and into the bumper. That's why I had to remove the plastic screw retainers. I'm installing this a little differently than instructed, so I got replacement carriage bolts that were only 3 quarters of an inch long. The reason for this is that the original instructions required trimming the front of the engine splash shield, but I want to leave mine intact and have it sit over top of the splitter instead. You can see here I've zip tied the front of the fender liner to the splash shield so it doesn't move around. I've also left the plastic screw retainers on the ends of the bumper so I can reuse the original screws to secure the fender liner. The trick is to make sure this little tab slides up between the splitter and the bumper. The holes lined up pretty well, but it was a little tight when I got to the outer ones. When assembling, make sure you only put a washer on top. When you tighten the nut, the square base on the carriage bolt will get press formed up into the plastic. I did a quick test fit and found this corner to be too flimsy. Fortunately, I already have a hole right here from the old splitter that I'm going to reuse to secure it better. Here's my existing hole. If you can, try to make yours closer to the corner edge and use a center punch to keep the drill bit from walking. I'm going to use one of my smaller bits to mark the splitter underneath through the hole. I used the step bit to make the hole the same size as the rest. Bolt the hardware through the new hole the same way as the others. If you're planning on installing support rods, you may want to mount them to your impact bar or bumper cover at this point. Reattach the bumper per my guide linked in the video description. The only difference now is that the engine splash shield will simply sit over the top of the back edge of the splitter. For the holes by the wheel well, the fender liner will sit between the bumper and the splitter. You can reuse the original screws or get longer ones. If you have an underglow kit installed, you may need to relocate the front tube. I used my step bit to make some additional holes here here, and here, giving me three pairs of holes to attach my tube with zip ties. This corner is much more secure with the additional bolts. Now to figure out where to mount the support rods to the splitter. I'm going to use these two pieces of wood to see how well the support location works. The corner seems stable, but the middle seems a bit flimsy. If we move the supports in more, the corner is still stable thanks to that bolt there. In the middle, is also more stable. I think we have a winner. I measured 4 inches in from this corner here and then marked it on both sides on painter's tape and then half an inch back from the front edge. With the center marked, I'm going to drill my pilot holes on both sides. Now to enlarge them with my step bit to match the support rods bolt diameter. With the support rods installed, I'm done. The new splitter matches up better with my universal side skirt splitters and my rear icon splitters since they all extend out the sides the same distance. It helps tie everything together for a more unified look. I've been driving around for a couple of weeks with the new splitter installed without any problems. It was a really nice upgrade compared to what I had on here before. It actually makes removing the bumper easier since there's less screws to manage and the installation was pretty simple. Despite how long it took to receive it, I'm still very glad I ordered it. If this one ever got damaged, I'd probably get another one. I'll put a link to the shop in the video description below. If you haven't hit subscribe to my channel yet, please do so now, and as always, thank you for watching.